Hey everyone, it's Kenji. Uh, I'm here at my restaurant, Worst Hall in San Mateo, um, and today I'm making some Kung Pao chicken. Um, you've probably, I've made a couple videos of this before, but you know, this is like a new format, I guess. Completely new world, so we're gonna do it again. Um, starting with some chicken thigh this time. Um, I think the recipe I have written calls for chicken breast, but you can really do it either way. I happen to have some chicken thigh here. And we're just gonna trim off some of this excess fat. This is one of those dishes that actually really works quite well with chicken breast because it, uh, chicken breast, you know, I find it absorbs flavors really nicely and so long as you don't overcook it, it can be really nice and tender. Um, I don't know if it's, I'm just getting older or what, but I tend to actually prefer chicken breast these days to chicken thigh most of the time, at least when it's well prepared. Um, so we're gonna dice this up into maybe like half inch to three quarter inch dice. It doesn't have to be too precise. Um, the goal really is just even size so that it all cooks evenly and you don't have to wait for like the big pieces to cook while the small pieces cook. This is a, um, it's a classic Sichuan dish. Um, it, uh, it has some of that ma la flavor, the, um, the spicy and numbing flavor because it uses Sichuan peppercorns and uh, dried chilies, but it's not particularly spicy. You know, it's not, it's not like, uh, like la zeji, like the Chongqing style uh, chicken with chilies, which is really spicy. Um, Kung Pao chicken is a little bit more mild. So we got our chicken. Um, Gonna get into this sixth pan here. Uh, look, at the uh, restaurant we do we do color coded things. So red is for meat, white is for uh, vegetables and stuff, so that you don't cross contaminate. Um, at home, you don't really have to do that. Just be careful about how you wash. Okay, I'm gonna wash my hands. People sometimes ask me whether. Um, it's important to wear gloves or not, um, or whether you're supposed to wear gloves at a restaurant. Um, well, gloves are optional. Um, in the state of California, they're optional. Um, and actually, a lot of the research shows that um, people who don't use gloves actually tend to be a little bit cleaner because they wash their hands more frequently, whereas when you wear gloves, you tend to forget to change them frequently enough. Um, and so you end up uh, carrying more pathogens around than you would if you just washed your hands without wearing gloves. All right, so now I got um, my chicken. This is a little bit of light soy sauce. You could also use shoyu. That's about I don't know, a teaspoon or so. And this is about 12 ounces of chicken. A little bit of cornstarch. Tiny bit of Shaoxing wine. You could use dry sherry if you don't have Shaoxing wine. Shaoxing wine is a oxidized rice wine, Chinese rice wine. <clears throat> and some salt. I'm just gonna mix that all up. If you wanna really go kinda all out on this and, and want extraordinarily tender chicken, um, what you can do is wash it, which I sometimes do with my meats. I don't usually don't do too much with chicken. I might do a chicken breast. Um, what you do is you wash the meat, so you take the chicken, you put it in a bowl of cold water, you swirl it around, swirl it around with your fingertips. Um, if you watch uh, Chef Wang Gang's YouTube channel, W-A-N-G space G-A-N-G, uh, he's a chef from Sichuan, who has a great YouTube channel. He shows you frequently how to wash meats like that, and um, it helps them absorb marinades a little bit better, and it also tenderizes them. Um, so I got a couple other ingredients here. We got our scallions. Um, so scallions, what I like to do, so you see how sometimes they get like the, those kind of slimy outer layers? Just run them under a little cold water and basically slide those layers off. And sometimes you want, sometimes like with things like this, you want to pull off that entire outer layer and, and you'll feel like a kind of slimy in between layer that you also need to slide off. All right, there you go. Scallions, so the scallions we're also gonna cut into chunks about a similar size to the chicken. Um, the goal here, and in fact with a lot of, um, a lot of stir fried dishes, the goal is to get um, all of your ingredients is sort of the same size, um, you know, kind of chopstick size. So these scallions I'm gonna cut into about, you know, half to three quarter inch knobs. Just the white parts, you can save the greens for something else. Um, or if they're kind of looking tired like mine wears, you can just, you can just discard them. All right, we got our scallions here, we got our chicken, we got peanuts. And what are we gonna do? We got some garlic here. 
garlic I've peeled. Trim off the tops. And then uh, you can you can mince it or you I, just, I prefer actually sliced garlic for this. So what I do is I, I get it, lay it flat, cut it not quite at um, not quite perpendicular to the grain, but a little bit of an angle. And what I do is I go halfway like this, and then turn it over onto the flat side. You can sometimes turn it over again if it's a really big clove like that. So I was cutting like that. I can turn it over again so that the flat side is stable. Okay. I'll let me let me show you slowly. All right. So fingers like this. Cut, 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 cut. See, slices, and then you turn it, you take it and you turn it on its side like this. And you keep going. See? Easy. These are gonna go into uh, here. And some ginger. So I'm gonna take a. How much ginger do we want? We want. Uh, I'll use like maybe one of these smaller pieces here. Spoon is the easiest way to peel ginger. You just rub it with a spoon and the peel comes right off. Skin, I should say. The skin comes right off. There you go. And if it's... um. If it's really old ginger, you might want to consider sort of microplaning it or really finely mincing it. This ginger is nice and seems nice and tender, so I'm just going to slice it and um, I'm actually going to sliver it. So I'm going to first slice it into planks like this. Okay, and then I'm going to kind of roughly, you can be very precise if you want, you know, like if I was doing this at a fancy restaurant, I'd be very precise, but I'm not, I'm just cooking for myself right now. So I'm gonna kind of roughly lay them out till they're perpendicular to each other. Oops. And then go back along this way to get kind of thin strips. Julienne, fine julienne matchsticks. That's what they call them. Okay. <clears throat> All right, so those are our aromatics. Aromatics, peanuts, scallions, chicken. Now let's do our spices. So we got these dried chilies. These are um, Sichuan heaven facing peppers. You can use Arbol, chili de Arbol. Um, any kind of sort of small hot pepper will work. Um, snip off the stem end of all of them. Now, Arbol chilies are quite hot. Um, and these Sichuan, these Sichuan chilies are actually quite hot as well. But most of that heat is in the ribs and in the seeds. So what we really want is more of the chili flavor and less of the chili heat. Um, so we're going to take out the seeds um, after after trimming these. That guy's a little tired looking. Um, dried chilies, by the way, store them in the freezer and they last a long time. All right, so I'm taking out taking out the seeds first like that. Give them a little shake. flick like that. And of course, if you really want this dish spicy, which which you can, it's totally up to you. Um, you can leave those seeds right in there and it'll it'll make it fiery hot. So, chilies provide the hot heat. Oh, actually, let's let's quickly. So, these we're also going to cut into about the same size pieces, roughly the same size. I'm going to I'm going to basically cut them in half. This, by the way, is one of my favorite dishes of all time. When I was growing up, um, you know, I grew up in New York, um, and in New York Chinese restaurants, um, the dish was sort of translated into something called diced chicken with hot peppers and peanuts, and it usually had uh, bell peppers and peanuts and celery. Um, so not a particularly authentic version, but I like both versions. You know, this is this is sort of the more classic, real Sichuan version. So we got our chilies. Sichuan peppercorns, this is too many of them, but um, so when you get your Sichuan peppercorns, um, these are the, um, the husk of, an, of the prickly ash tree, uh, the berry of the prickly ash tree, and mainly you're looking, you're looking just for the husk. 
Um, so if you look, if you get your Sichuan peppercorns, I buy mine online usually or sometimes at the Chinese market. These ones came from the Chinese market. Sometimes they have these little black seeds, which are the interior parts of the, of the husk and you don't want those. Um, so if you can pick those out, usually there aren't too many, but it really, it really varies from brand to brand. So there's a couple in here. Those get a kind of crunchy, sort of sandy texture and they're really unpleasant to eat. So you're looking just for the husk, which is where the flavor is. Um, and of course, if, like some, some brands also come with like a lot of twigs and stuff in them. This one, this brand looks really clean, which is nice. Sometimes you'll see little twigs. Um, here's a tiny twig. Uh, if you see little twigs like that, get rid of them. Um, all right, so peppercorns, um, chilies, and maybe a teaspoon or so of peppercorns. Doesn't need, doesn't need to be too many. Um, this is what's going to provide that sort of numbing heat, um, as well as a, you know, a ton of aroma. They have a very sort of lemony aroma, which is beautiful. Um, lemony, piney aroma. Uh, and then they, they, they numb your mouth, and that's, that's really one of the features of uh, Citron, Citron cuisine. All right, I think that's all our ingredients. So the only other things are the sauce. Um, let me get a little bowl to make the sauce in. <clears throat> I'm gonna use this. So, a little splash of water or stock. Um, I'm just using water here. A couple tablespoons. We're gonna do a little bit of light soy sauce. Some shushing wine. I'm just eyeballing this, um, but if you go to, I'll leave a link in the description, um, which will tell you, um, give you a link to exactly where uh, a recipe with all the exact ra ratios of ingredients. This is chinkang vinegar, um, so it's an aged vinegar. Um, if you can't find chinkang vinegar, which you can find basically in any Chinese market um, or order online, if you can't get it or you don't want to order online, um, you can use balsamic vinegar. That's actually the, the closest thing to it. A little bit of cornstarch. So this is not like a super saucy dish the way um, like a Chinese American style Kung Pao chicken is. Um, so we don't want it to be like super gloppy. And cornstarch is what makes that, makes sauces that, it gives Chinese sauces, and Chinese American sauces in particular, but Chinese sauces too, that uh, sort of, I don't know, that sort of slick, glossy texture, um, which is not what we're going for in this dish. We want it to be kind of dry. Um, finally, a little bit of honey. So, sweet, vinegary, salty, hot, and numbing. Those are, those are kind of all the qualities that we're going for in this dish. Oh, that was probably about a tablespoon or so of honey. And here we go. All right, I got my wok. The highest seat you can get, this wok, this burner is pretty hot, um, so uh, I'm lucky in that regard. Um, but you can easily do this at home. If you're doing it at home um, on a home burner, um, use the highest seat you can possibly get. Let your wok preheat. Um, and actually, you know what I'm doing? I'm a. This is a peanut oil, and these peanuts are actually raw. So I'm going to be. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to. Give them a little fry so that they cook. Um, you can easily use uh, dry roasted peanuts. So I'm gonna let those sizzle up a little bit. Let me get a slotted spoon. There we go. Slotted spoon. That was peanut oil, by the way. Peanut oil is really great for stir frying. It um, has a high smoke point. It um, it's actually great for deep frying as well. So high, the, it's a highly saturated. It's a vegetable fat, but it's more similar to some animal fat, fats in that it's highly saturated. Um, and generally, things that, when you fry things in highly saturated fats, they come out um, crisper than if you fly, fry them in lower saturated fats. So that's why you know, say like duck fry, duck fat. Duck fat fried potatoes are really crispy and delicious. Whereas sort of all things you fry in olive oil tend to uh, soften up a little bit faster. All right, we're just gonna let these sizzle a little bit. It's starting to smell good. This wok I have, by the way, um, is a 14 inch wok that I bought in 2000, I think, something around there. It's about 20 years old. Um, I got it 
I got it from Target. I think it's Typhoon brand. I have no idea if they still make that brand. I really doubt it. I got it from Target, but I have a couple other walks. Um, I recommend a 14, for home, I recommend a 14 inch walk at least. Um, and I recommend one with a handle and a helper handle. Um, some, st some styles of walks have two handles like this. For home cooking, I find it much easier to use the kind that has a handle um, on both and a helper handle. Um, and then uh, I do recommend a flat bottom walk for a home range. Um, if you have a wok burner set up where you have like a kind of ring um, with flames coming all, from all sides, then a traditional wok with a round bottom is better. But um, for a home setup, flat bottom wok. All right, these peanuts are getting nice and golden. They're done. And the trick with any, any stir fry, of course, is that you want to have everything ready to go um, because once you start cooking, it's fast. I'm gonna take that off heat for a second so I can remove some of the oil. I don't need quite that much oil to start. All right, so I got a couple tablespoons of oil in there. Let me get my chicken here. Get my chicken ready. I got my aromatics. Chicken's been marinating, what, like 15 minutes or so, 12 minutes? Um, ideally, you'd let it marinate for about 20 minutes so that um, it has time to, the fat has, the, sorry, the, the protein has time to break down from the, um, the salt you've added, which helps it stay juicier. Here, aromatics in. They're gonna fry for just a few seconds, just to infuse that oil, and the chicken's going right in. You don't wanna let those aromatics cook too much because they'll start to burn, and burnt, Switch to my actual spatula. I don't know why I'm using this spoon here. Uh, burnt aromatics don't taste good. They taste burnt. So if you have a really weak stove at home, um, what I would recommend doing is cooking in batches. So cook half the chicken, um, take it out, reheat your, reheat your wok, cook the other batch of chicken, take it out, um, reheat your wok, add your, add your uh, scallions and peanuts back in, cook them, then add your chicken back in and add your sauce. Um, this burner is hot enough that I'm going to be able to cook it all in one go. So once it goes in, constant motion, toss, toss, toss. This point I'm gonna add my Aromatics in, my garlic and my ginger, as well as my scallions. Man, that smells good. Yeah, let's get our peanuts back in. sauce. I'm going to give it a little stir less, one last time just to make sure that none of that corn starch has settled to the bottom and it's all homogenous here. done. Play a little wipe here. So 
There you go. That is. That's how you make lunch. Um, well, I don't have any chopsticks here. I'm gonna. I don't even have a fork. I guess I'm gonna eat with a spoon. Well, let's try this anyway. That is good. You see it? Let's get some better light. So it's hot, a little bit spicy, a little bit numbing, a little bit sweet, vinegary. Got those crunchy peanuts. Chicken is tender and flavorful. That's some good stuff. Sorry, my dog's not here. I can't feed her. I'll bring some home for her later. All right. Bye-bye, guys. See you tomorrow.